Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Friday. We're at the end of another working week and we are one day away from Arsenal's final game before the break for the World Cup. Away at Wolves tomorrow night, tricky final game. Wolves never an easy place to go, bit cliche I know, but it's true. Don't concede too many goals, so Arsenal are going to have to be at their best to beat them. And if they do, then they will be heading into the break for the World Cup, sitting top of the Premier League with at least a two-point lead after 14 games. Who would have predicted that at the start of the season? Certainly not me, that is for sure. So I'll look at to the, uh, that game against Wolves in today's video. Look at who could be starting at that game. Looking at the team news, also a little bit of discussion about the England World Cup squad at the end because there is a very strong Arsenal representation in that, of course. So, Wolves tomorrow night. I look back to that Wolves game last season. It was so tense. It was a 1-0, wasn't it? A really scrappy goal. Gabriel, I think. And um, and then Arsenal had to survive with Martinelli being sent off for like the last 25 minutes. They held on. There was all the celebrations at the end. All the Wolves players kicked off about it. And then there was the game against Wolves a couple of weeks later at the Emirates when Lacazette scored that deflected sort of injury time winner. And um felt like a really big moment in the race of the top four. Unfortunately, it didn't quite happen, uh, obviously, in terms of the top four. But uh, two really important games in the season last season. Two really, really tight games as well. And yes, I know Wolves aren't doing great this year. They've had their issues, but I'm still expecting it to be a tight game because you just know what you're going to get from Wolves. They do not give up many goals at all. They don't score many either. So going to be a very, very tight one. They could well have their new manager not on the touchline, but at the stadium for the first time. So you're going to have that added buzz. I'm sure the atmosphere will be buzzing because of it. It's a night game, obviously, which is going to add to the atmosphere as well. So it's a difficult game. You know, Arsenal would love to have a nice three o'clock home match to send to go into the World Cup but instead they're away 745 under the lights at Molyneux not ideal but if you win that you go into the break top of the table you think Man City are probably very very likely to win tomorrow they've got Brentford at home that's the early kickoff so Arsenal will know going into the game against Wolves whether they are top or second uh, and then even Newcastle beginning to hunt down as well really picking up some good results but they've got a tricky game at che against Chelsea tomorrow as well so some really big games to go into the World Cup break and you look at the team that Arsenal are going to select for this one you think it's pretty strong they do not have too many issues going into that match which is a good news for Mikel Arteta obviously and certainly You'd have to say, given how mad and crazy the fixture schedule has been since the start of the season, and especially since the Europa League has started up, for Arsenal to be at this stage, we've only really one definite you know, long-term injury in Emil Smith-Rowe, which we've known about for a while, and then one sort of doubt over Takahiro Tomiyasu, then you've got to say they've really managed it well. Arteta's managed the workload well. The medical staff, the sports scientists, they seem to have done their jobs very well. And Arsenal are in a, in a very good state. If they can continue that for the whole season, once they come back, then you think they're in a, they'll are in they have a really good you know, chance of achieving what they want to achieve uh, during the second half of the season because that's going to be even more crazy. But you look at the game tomorrow, I think we all pretty much know what the starting eleven is going to be. I'll be very surprised if there's too many other changes. Obviously, something might have gone on behind the scenes that we don't know about yet. Someone might have picked up something in, in training. But as it stands, there's sort of team news for this one. Is obviously no Emil Smith-Rowe out. He's out until after the World Cup. We know that. And Tommy Asu's being assessed. He's got that muscle injury that has kept him out, uh, kept him out on Thursday night. And personally, I can't imagine he's going to be risked for this one. He's got the World Cup as well right on the right uh straight after i know Mikel has always said look the focus has to be arsenal i don't even care about the world cup but in picking something you know picking a team selection for this game at Wolves, you'd be very surprised if tommy asu is even risked i mean he's not going to start anyway even if he was fit it'd be on the bench so i just i imagine he's probably going to be given the uh given the night off and told look just get yourself ready for japan arsenal aren't absolutely desperate for right backs at the moment um we know you've got Ben White who can play there. Cedric Suarez can play there, obviously. Um, so I just I imagine Tommy Asu is going to be given the rest. So you look at who's going to start, and it pretty much picks itself, doesn't it? You're going to have Aaron Ramsdale's going to be in goal. It'll be Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, um, uh, Zinchenko, Party, Odegaard, Xhaka, Saka, Jesus, and Gabriel Martinelli. You imagine that is the team that's going to start uh, Molyneux. I'd be very surprised if it doesn't. I think the one thing you're sort of looking at there potentially is left back. But even now, I think Zinchenko, he came on on Thursday, on Wednesday night. So he's clearly fit. 
started against Chelsea. I just think he starts. I don't think there's really any too much of a doubt over it uh, this weekend. As long as he hasn't had any sort of setback from the game on Wednesday night, I think it's definitely going to be Zinchenko. And I, I, he was a little bit rusty, I thought, against Chelsea, understandably so, last weekend. He hadn't played in a long, long time and thrown straight back into the starting eleven. But when you kind of look at his position, and I've seen some real detailed breakdowns, you know, some of the sort of analytical videos looking at the performance and the tactics after the Chelsea game, and you look at exactly what Zinchenko does and how he drops into that midfield role, and then Gabriel Martinelli pulls out wide. It, you can you can understand why Arteta is so, so keen to get Zinchenko involved whenever he's fit because it just fits his tactics absolutely perfectly. And and as harsh as it is on Kieran Tierney at the moment, if he's fit, it's going to be Zinchenko. So I, I'd be very surprised if it isn't. And then everyone else at the moment, providing everyone's fit, you know it's going to, you know exactly what's going to happen with the with the start eleven. It's a really nice place to be, and I think that's so key to Arsenal doing well this season because we've seen when they have had to make changes, you know the the, the sort of backups they're not quite there yet to really continue maintain this level that Arsenal is setting in the Premier League. We saw it on Wednesday night against Brighton, for example. And I spoke about it in yesterday's video how some of the how some of the backup players need to do more when they're given the opportunity, especially some of the big money ones like Sammy De Conga and Fabio Vieira, who really need to stop putting a little bit more pressure on the regular starting eleven. Um, and hopefully they will do that during the second half of the season. It's such a big game, I think. This one does it really matter if you're top going into the World Cup? I mean, you probably say. You know it's not going to have that much of a bearing on the second half of the season, but just knowing you do go into that break, knowing you're not going to come back until Boxing Day and you're sitting top of the Premier League, psychologically that would be a, such a massive thing. I think it'd be rich reward for what Arsenal have done so far during the first half of the season. We spoke to um, William Saliba about it after the game on, on Wednesday night in the mix zone when we were talking to him about his World Cup call-up and we said, you know, how, how important would it be? And he did say it would be important. And I think personally... I think all the players would will think that you know they're so proud of being top of the table and the fact that they've been top of the table for so long now that I think there would be a sense of disappointment if they go into this World Cup break and they're not top because they've been there for so long because they've set the standard because they've set the pace that if they were knocked off if they did go into it and a little bit of a low with a you know defeat or even a draw on Saturday night I think they'd be disappointed with that and I think we're going to see a good performance from Arsenal on Saturday. I don't think the defeat against Brighton is going to have any sort of bearing on this performance. Um, obviously, Mikel made 10 changes for that game against Brighton. Only William Saliba was the only starter who started at Stamford Bridge. Um, so I just think, you know, the Premier League team are going to come back in. They're all going to have that added confidence from the last away game away at Chelsea. And I think they'll take that into the into the Wolves game. It's going to be difficult, no doubt about it. Like I said, I think if Wolves have got their new manager on the touchline, that's just going to add to the occasion on Saturday night. And it's certainly going to add to the atmosphere. Wolves did have a good win in midweek in the League Cup against Leeds. So they'll have a little bit of confidence going into it. But if Arsenal can get themselves in front, they can get the first goal, which they've tended to do this season. I think they should hopefully be too strong for this Wolves team because the Wolves don't score too many goals. I think Arsenal... Would, defending very well at the moment as a group we saw that at Stamford Bridge so if they can get the first goal and I think the one issue for Arsenal recently has been scoring goals that you know take the Nottingham Forest game out of it for example and they've rarely scored more than once in a game for a long time and that's a lot big part of that is down to uh, Gabriel Jesus' struggles in front of goal what a boost it would be for him for Arsenal and for Brazil if he could get his goal uh, at the weekend and go into the World Cup break you know with just that extra little confidence boost I'm sure that would do him the world of good ahead of the tournament um, and it would certainly do Arsenal the world of good tomorrow because I just feel like that that first goal is going to be such so crucial and what is undoubtedly going to be a tight game I'm expecting another very similar sort of game to what we saw against uh, Chelsea last weekend Arsenal will dominate look to dominate possession they'll get on the front foot they'll press they'll do everything that they did last week at Stamford Bridge and it's just taking advantage of that pressure, getting yourselves in front and then holding on. And the form that Gabriel and Saliba are showing at the moment, the form that Thomas Partey is in at the moment, you just fancy Arsenal if they do get the first goal to to go on and win this game. They didn't at Southampton fairly recently. They got the first goal then and they tired a little bit. But I just think that win against Chelsea is going to give them a little bit of an extra boost and the fact that so many of them were rested on Wednesday night against Brighton. That that tiredness that we saw in the recent away game at Southampton, I just don't really expect that to be there this time on Saturday night. I think Arsenal are going to look pretty fresh. And um, 
And so, yeah, I just feel like if they do get that first goal, that it's going to be absolutely crucial. But let me know what you guys think, obviously, in the comments below. Who should be starting this game? Let me know your starting, starting 11s. Who will be the key man for you? Anything you've agreed with, disagreed with, let me know in the comments below. Okay, so big news yesterday in terms of the England World Cup squad over here anyway. A um, few surprises in there. Ben White made it, which isn't shouldn't even be considered one of the surprises. He should have been one of the first names in the squad given his form this season. The fact that there was even questions or any sort of debate over his possible inclusion was laughable, as I've said many a times, because uh, he's just been so, so good this season. He absolutely deserves his place in the squad. He should be starting uh, for me. He should be alongside John Stones at centre-back for England. I don't think he will be, because Southgate's going to do what Southgate always does. We're going to play three at the back. He's going to stick Harry Maguire in there, even though Harry Maguire doesn't deserve to even be in the squad. Um, but he will, because it's Gareth Southgate. So I imagine Ben White's probably going to be on the bench. Maybe he might have a chance of starting on that right side of the back three, because Kyle Walker, who would normally be there under Southgate, is as an injury doubt and might not be available till the knockout stages so that might give white an opportunity hopefully it does because he absolutely deserves to be playing but just the fact he's in it is good news and it's rich reward for him for such a fantastic start to the season um Bakaya Saka's in it obviously he's a shoe in hopefully he'll be starting on the right hand side of the attack and Aaron Ramsdale is in it as well don't think we'll see much of Aaron Ramsdale in the tournament um it looks like Nick Pope is second choice behind Jordan Pickford so Ramsdale's just going to have to play a bit of a waiting game and be one of those squad members around the squad but still good news for them three players out of the 26 representing Arsenal um in the England squad so that's good news some surprises on it I know you probably don't want to hear me talk about England but I don't know how Conor Gallagher has managed to blag his way into that England squad I really don't I like Conor Gallagher don't get me wrong I think he's a really good player I thought he was brilliant for Crystal Palace last season but he's not played well for Chelsea this season he's only played made seven appearances I think and, you know, even look at Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who didn't make the squad. He's played a lot more than than Callagher for Chelsea this season. He hasn't made the squad. James Ward-Prowse, who has not been great, but I still think he probably deserves a little bit more of a look in than Colin Gallagher. But, you know, who am I to say? But I thought, I, thought, I was disappointed for Ivan Tony as well, who I thought deserved to be in the squad. I think it's four. He scored nine goals in 15 games for Brentford this season. Um, Tammy Abraham didn't make it. It was, yeah, there's, there's some surprise choices there for Southgate from Southgate. I just thought the Maguire one was odd. I just don't think... He, he said in his press conference that he didn't include Tammy Abraham because he's had a, he, he's just not been good enough. His form's been poor at the wrong time. And justifiably so, he'd only scored four goals this season, Tammy Abraham for, a, for Roma. But I don't see how on one hand you can talk about not including Tammy Abraham for form, but then you can include, include players like Gallagher and... Um, Harry Maguire. I mean, Harry Maguire's form has been dreadful for ages so much so he doesn't even get a look in really for Man United in the Premier League now. And last time he played for England, he was absolutely awful as well. Um, so yeah, it's weird. And I can kind of understand it because he's got that loyalty Maguire. Maguire's played very well in recent tournaments. But I mean, how long does that how long does that go back? Euro 2022, uh, Euro 2020 was a while ago now. And, and Maguire's barely played since then because his form's been so bad. So yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's England. I know you probably don't want to hear me talking about England. So good news for Arsenal anyway. Really happy for Ben White. Um, and yes, yeah, Saka and Ramsdale absolutely warrant in their place in the team as well. So plenty of Arsenal um, players to keep us entertained during the World Cup to keep an eye on. Fingers crossed they all come back unscathed. But we do have that big weekend of football this weekend to get through before we really start discussing the World Cup and all eyes turn to Qatar. Enjoy the rest of your Fridays, everyone. Please do have a good weekend. And uh, yeah, tune in to me as we build up to Wolves tomorrow. All the usual stuff coming from me at Molyneux. Have a good day, everyone. I'll speak to you soon.